BJP sweeps the Hindi heartland with a stunning victory in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. Congress finds some solace with a victory in Telangana but loses its toehold in the north before the 2024 Lok Sabha elections. The results of the assembly elections in Mizoram will be announced today. The market looks set to cheer the BJP sweep of the Hindi heartland. The gift Nifty is indicating a near 300-point gap up on the Nifty, signalling a start close to the 20,600 mark. And Wall Street closes strong on Friday. The S&P 500 hits its highest level since March of 2022 as investors bet on the Fed's starting rate cuts by next year. The Asian markets are mixed in early trade. Crude prices slip on Friday. Brent moves below $80 a barrel as OPEC's production cuts underwhelm, while the U.S. rig count also rises. Prices recoup some losses this morning. For gold, we've seen a record high on Friday as investors bet on the Fed starting with rate cuts in the next year. And speaking at the India Business Leader Awards held over the weekend, Commerce Minister Piyush Goel says India's demographics will inflate India's per capita GDP income to about $20,000 by 2047. Oil and Gas Minister Hardeep Puri bets big on India's energy transition and also stresses on the need to have stable and predictable energy prices. ये चुनाव वह खुद जीता है आज हर किसान यही कहता है ये चुनाव हर किसान जीता है All right, that is the big news as we kickstart things this Monday morning, the state election results and that sweeping, sweeping win by the BJP. That is what the GIF Nifty is also cheering in such fine mode. We have a 300-point uptick. Good morning and welcome to Power Breakfast. I'm Pavitra. And, you know, let's talk about all of those uh, results that really came through from the state assembly elections. The BJP sweep of the Hindi heartland with a stunning victory in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. They performed way better than even what was projected in the exit polls. The Congress, meanwhile, sees some consolation with its win in Telangana. The anti-incumbency trend continued in Rajasthan with the Congress being ousted and the BJP winning 115 of the 199 seats on offer. Now, the Congress chief minister has already tendered his resignation. In fact, the BJP also retained power in Madhya Pradesh, winning 163 seats in total, which is the biggest ever win that we've seen in the state with the Congress, uh, while, you know, they won only around 66 seats. Chief Minister uh, Shivrat Singh Chauhan credited the people with faith in Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision for this big win that we've seen. Uh, this is in Madhya Pradesh. Let me also talk to you about Chhattisgarh now. Contrary to what the exit polls had predicted, the BJP registered its biggest win in Chhattisgarh as well, crushing the hope uh, of the Bhupesh Bhagel-led Congress, the Congress campaign uh, in the state. Now, the BJP won 54 seats. The Congress managed only 35, like you can see on your screen. Meanwhile, talking about Telangana, the Congress did emerge as a winner over there, winning 64 seats. The BRS won 39 seats, followed uh, by the BJP that won 8 and the AIMIM that won 7 seats. Now, the poll results come as a major disappointment for BRS as it was eyeing a third term in the state. So that's really a recap of what came through. A uh, complete sweep by the BJP in the, heartland, in the Hindi heartland is what we've been talking about and which is why it is expected that the markets will really cheer this mode. Uh, but staying with what will affect our own markets, we have our research team now to take us through the trade setup, all of the stocks also that you should watch out for now. Mangalam, Vivek and Hormaz are all here for that and to prep you up for this session. Uh, guys, a very good morning to all of you. I mean, it's, there's no two ways about the fact that the start is definitely going to be very solid. Vivek, it's going to be a lot about the domestic queues. But, you know, even if you look at some of the other queues globally, it does look very supportive. 
You're absolutely right. You know, like you mentioned, you know, the outcome of the state election polls is something that's expected to at least ensure a very strong gap of start to our own markets. Not only that, when you're talking about the handover from global equity indices, you know, that too has been quite strong. In fact, uh, you know, on Friday, the S&P 500 scale fresh 2023 highs as well. Along with that, when you're talking about crude oil prices, crude oil prices further soften on Friday. Brent futures down over 2% on Friday, now trading closer to the $78 a barrel mark. Now, talking about the Indian markets, uh, not only on Friday, but when you're talking about, you know, the week gone by, the Indian markets gained over 2%. Remember, along with the Indian markets, the Nifty, you know, managed to outperform all of its regional peers. Along with that fifth trade session, you know, week of positive gains for the Nifty. And not only that, you know, the mid-cap and the small-cap indices, especially the mid-cap indices, 15 trade sessions of gains. That indicates that 15 trade sessions of record highs were hit on the mid-cap index. So significant, uh, you know, positive flow coming in, especially in the broader end of the market. So key events, like you mentioned, you know, the outcome of the polls. Along with that, remember, Mizoram counting today. And this week, you know, the RBI meet uh, policy meet outcome is something that markets will take some cues from. So overall, strong gap up start is what we're anticipating today. Okay, strong gap up start. And it uh, now it feels like the market knew this well before us, right? I mean, considering that we hit that 20,000 mark last week itself. But Ormas, take us through some of the stocks that we should watch out for. There's been a lot of action over the weekend. Plenty of action, but on a day like this, I really doubt the stocks would matter. But regardless, uh, Hero Motor Corp, I'll start off with sales numbers that came in post-market on Friday. The numbers were up 25.6% from last year, but they were slightly below Nomura's estimates of 4.95 lakh units. Aishar Motors, where the Royal Enfield sales were up 13% at around 8,251 units, but they were below Nomura's estimates as well. Their estimates were at 85,000 units. Now, CAMS, uh, there's a block deal that's likely to take place where a Warburg Pincus affiliate is likely to sell up to 8% of the outstanding equity. The base size is around 1,000 crores with an option to upsize and the floor price of 2,500 rupees is a 10% discount to Friday's closing price. Hindustan Zinc will be in focus. There's a board meeting on the 6th of December, which is Wednesday, and they will be considering its second interim dividend as well. Strides Pharma, where they've executed the final agreement to transfer Stellis Biopharma's Unit 3 multimodal facility in Bangalore to Sinjin. However, the key thing to note is that the gross consideration is revised lower to 617 crores from 702 crores earlier. Alchem Laboratories, its Mandwa facility has received form 483 with three observations. Uh, Tata Power is going to acquire the Bikaner Nimrana transmission project which is set up by a subsidiary of Power Finance Corporation and that project is estimated to cost 1544 crore rupees. And lastly, Sue's Law, where Blackstone has informed the exchanges that it now owns a 5% stake in the company. It increased its stake marginally on Friday's, Friday's trading session. Back to you. Okay, Harmas, thanks a lot for filling us in with all of that action. Let's also talk about cues from the futures and options space. Uh, Mangalam, looks like the start will be close to 20,600. That is correct. You know, what a phenomenal rally we've had in the last one month or so. And that culminated into the market hitting a record high on Friday's trading session ahead. And that wasn't even factoring in the sort of election results that came in. So as a result of which, we are likely to see a much higher rally as, uh, you know, the election results will fuel the rally, which was already underway on account of a couple of factors further. So like you said, you know, the gift nifty comes up for you. Uh, at the first opening itself, we see an uptick of nearly 250 odd points. The question is where it goes from here itself, 260 points as we speak. So a couple of factors that have been fueling the rally, apart from good global cues, it's been the FIS buying in cash market as well. You know, over the last seven trading sessions, the FIS have bought in cash markets and that has led to the market moving higher even further. On uh, Friday as well, we saw a purchase of nearly 1,600 odd crores. Not just that, on day one of the December series, FII has also bought about 700 crores in index futures. And in that, what they did was they added about 7,000 long contracts and they covered about 2,850 short contracts. So as a result of which, the FII long exposure, which started the series at around 35%, has inched mildly higher to 38%. And mind you, mind you nearly two-thirds of FII positions are still on the short side. So there would be room for further short covering. The market in the last one, uh, one month or so, the Nifty has moved around 4.5%. With all eyes set on the 2024 central election, the question is, how much higher can we go? We had a Motilal Oswal note saying that, you know, before the 2014 election, six months prior to that, the Nifty had moved down 19%. And in the 2019 election as well, six months prior to the election result date, the Nifty had moved around 11%. So if history is something to go by, we can see some sort of double-digit gains going forward over the next six months or so. 
For now, the 20,200 put writers were extremely active on Friday's trading session, telling you that the market has seen its base move higher. But after this up move and the election results, we'll see the market base move structurally higher by about 200 to 300 points as well, which reflects in the kind of call buying that we saw at 20,500, 20,600. And even 20,800 call writers saw a bunt, uh, bit of uh, punt buying. Just a couple of stocks on our radar, PFC, REC, a lot of these power and infra stocks do well in the months leading up to the election. We have a lot of them up and a lot of long positions being added there. All right, Mangalam, thanks a lot for taking us through all of those cues that we're watching for today from a domestic market standpoint. We do need to take a short break, but on the other side, we're going to shift focus to the global picture and talk about how those markets are really looking today. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast. Now, like we were mentioning, today is going to be a lot about the domestic queues today. But let's also, you know, get a check on what's going on globally because a lot of the queues from there as well are quite supportive. We did get that positive handover from Wall Street. And you have Asian markets which are largely higher this morning. So what's leading gains is the Hong Kong market. That's up around 110 points. Taiwan, meanwhile, has slipped a little bit. But like you can see, it's absolutely at the flat line. Not too much of a cut over there. You have Straits, Kospi, Shanghai, all trading with gains this morning. It's not too much, but they're all holding up well in the green ever since the market opened. The only market which is really seeing a significant cut in early trade in Asia is the Nikkei market. So that is down around 200 points, so around 7 tenths of a percent for the Japanese index. But let's also talk about the US now because Wall Street ended Friday's trading session higher. The Dow was up 290 points. The S&P 500 was also up around 30 points, closing at the highest level that we've seen uh, all the way since March of 2022, and the Nasdaq advanced around 80 points as well. If you look at it for the entire week, it's been another positive week. So the S&P 500 has been up around 8 tenths of a percent, the Dow has rallied 2.4 percent, and the Nasdaq advanced around 0.4 percent as well. And this is the fifth consecutive week of gains that we've seen for the U.S. indices. So uh, positive cues coming through there as well. But something else that I want to bring you is that the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell pushed back on market expectations for a rate cut and called it too early to declare a victory on inflation. So just listen in to a few of the comments that he had to say, which are very important from a market standpoint. It would be premature to conclude with confidence that we have achieved a sufficiently restrictive stance or to speculate on po when policy might ease. We are prepared to tighten policy further if it becomes appropriate to do so. All right, that is the big comment coming in from the U.S. Fed chair. But let's also listen in to what Mona Mahajan of Edward Jones has to say on the outlook from the U.S. market from here on. It's been a phenomenal November. And in fact, not only the S&P and Dow, but we've seen some of the lagging parts of the market play some catch up here as well. We saw small caps participate in this rally. We saw bond markets participate in this rally as well. Now, the pace that we saw in November with the S&P up nearly 10 percent, we don't know if that pace will continue through December, but we are seeing the ingredients in place um, for a sustainable rally. And that's what we call kind of a trifecta of fundamental events. All right, the ingredients are in place for a fundamental rally in December. That is the big view coming in. But with that, we do need to take a short break. On the other side, we're going to shift focus and talk about the commodities. Prices have, uh, you know, slipped even more, which is, of course, a positive for a market like India. We'll be back with that in just a bit. Welcome back. Let's get you an exclusive and very positive word now. Oday Kotak is optimistic of the 6.5% GDP growth. Speaking at the CNBC TV18 India Business Leader Awards, he emphasized on the need for the animal spirit to awaken for higher and more investments. So let's listen in to some of those comments. Stable macro economy. Uh, hopefully, inflation seems to be under control. And even if we hold interest rates here for a while, I think uh, people can... Uh, take a view that if oil doesn't be misbehave itself and things work out well in the rest of the world, yeah. if inflation comes under check, I think we should be in for better times. I think we'll hold, I think right now India is on hold for interest rates. So 6.5% uh, rate uh, is something which I think holds for a while. But, you know, with the Fed, you know, with the recent comments indicating that they're nearing the end or they have ended the rate hike, you think now there's space for RBI to act? I think every time Fed Chair uh, talks, he gives caution that he's not in a hurry to 
reduced rates. And I think it's about posterity and legacy from the point of view of the Federal Reserve. He's always reminded about the choices between Arthur, Arthur Burns and uh, Paul Walker. All right, that is the word coming in from Uday Kotak. Very uh, optimistic on the current macro situation in India and saying that we can aim for 6.5% GDP growth. But with that, let's also talk about the commodities now. There's been a lot of action. Manisha joins us with an update. Hi, Manisha. Morning, and thank you for that, Pavitra. Well, we have seen the gold prices continue to run up for one. Uh, the all-time high that we have on hand for gold now in an intraday market is $2,149 an ounce. I mean, it has been a one-way run here. It was only in the month of October that we were trading at an 1800 So trading at a 2150 right now has been a big jump for the gold prices. It's an all-time high in the international markets. And when the Indian markets open today, we will be hitting an all-time here here as well. The one area that's not doing so great has been the crude oil prices. It was 2% of decline in the previous week. It has been six weekly declines for the crude oil prices. The OPEC and Allies voluntary output, output cut is seen as small and for a very short period, and that's weighing onto the market. Add to that the fact that the China demand also continues to be on the weaker side, so markets are looking at pressure from there as well. But a quick word on copper, and that one is trading at a four-month high. So the market's clearly divided, and many of the commodities actually doing better than the others. Okay, Manisha, thanks a lot for getting us all of those details from the commodity markets. Let's also bring you some weather updates now because coastal districts of Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Odisha are all bracing for severe cyclonic storm and heavy rainfall as Cyclone Michong forms over the Bay of Bengal. Now, the Med Department has issued a red alert in parts of northern Tamil Nadu as well as coastal Andhra Pradesh. The government has also declared a public holiday in several districts of Tamil Nadu as heavy to very heavy rainfall is expected today. The rescue preparations are underway and the NDRF teams are deployed in all of the high alert areas. So we'll, of course, keep bringing you updates on this front as well through the day. With that, we do have to wind down on this edition of Power Breakfast with the news that the markets are, uh, well, at least the gift nifty is implying that we are going to have a solid, solid start close to that 20,600 point uh, mark with around a 300 point uptick on the nifty. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We have Bazaar Morning Call in just a bit.